Good evening. This is the Wilf San Jose Third Friday meeting. We have most third Fridays of every month. And tonight, well, as here's how things will go. We'll have the Raging Grannies open the meeting. And you know how that goes. Everybody but the person who is singing mutes themselves. And then the one person who's singing, we all sing along to our loudest and hardest as long as we're muted. And after that, Rowan is going to give us a, a, a presentation about Wilf and the history of Wilf and the strong women in Wilf. And we'll, after that, there's time for some Q&A, right, Rowan? Time for some Q&A? Absolutely. And, and there's and actually, then, there's a participation moment even. <laughs> All right, then get ready. And, and then we have time for some announcements. So if you have something you want to announce about something that's happening, get it all ready and get it ready. And you can put something in the chat as well. So that's how things will go. Oh, I forgot. We closed the meeting with the grannies singing their uh, traditional song of when we make peace. So that's the order of the meeting. Now it's time for the Raging Grannies. Tonight, Rowan is our Raging Granny. First of all, though, I'm going to share my screen so you can all see. We open with two songs. So everybody but Rowan needs to mute themselves, including me. We are not, we're not giving up. We are not ever giving up. We know we're in this struggle for the long haul. We're not giving up. Shoulder to shoulder, we're not giving up. Although we're growing older, we're not giving up. We know we're in this struggle for the long, long haul. We're not giving up. We ain't sitting crying. We're not giving up. The left is not dying we're not giving up we know we're in this struggle for the long haul we're not giving up we're up against the system we're not giving up we still resist them we're not giving up we know we're in this struggle for the long haul we're not giving up we are not we're not giving up we are not ever giving up we know we're in this struggle for the long haul we're not giving up so since i'm talking tonight about the history of wilf i'm going to attempt to sing bread and roses for you the original a poem by James Oppenheim was published in December of 1911 after he saw the slogan Bread for All and Roses Too. And his a poem was published again in 1912. That slogan was attributed to Chicago women trade unionists. The slogan Bread and Roses originated in the speech given by Rose Schneiderman in April 2nd, 1911. The worker must have bread, but she must have roses too inspired the title of the poem. The music is by Mimi Baez Farina, and uh, we have additional verses tonight that I learned from Darian Delu just in the past couple weeks when we've been working together on International Women's Day. As we come marching, marching in the beauty of the day, a million darkened kitchens, a thousand mill of gray, are touched with all the radiance that a sudden sun discloses. 
for the people hear us singing bread and roses bread and roses as we come marching marching we battle to for men for they are women's children and our victories their gain our lives shall not be sweated from birth until life closes hearts starve as well as bodies give us bread but give us roses as we come marching marching with all others will unite and with people of all races let us join in freedom's fight nations strive for liberation ending rule imposed by few yes bread will end our hunger but we'll have our roses too as we come marching marching unnumbered women dead go crying through our singing their ancient cry for bread small art and love and beauty their drudging spirits new yes it is bread we fight for but we fight for roses too as we come marching marching a million faces shine with the promise of a future a just life for humankind our past has been in darkness but the light of truth discloses that for centuries people fought for bread and roses bread and roses as we come marching marching from our home to factory door one alone can't make great changes but with others can ensure that the bosses feel our courage and the threat they know it poses all must heed our cry for justice bread and roses bread and roses as we come marching marching with our children by our side we will raise new women and women who are filled with strength and pride they will be tomorrow's leaders and to watch our numbers grow is a joy for all who struggle bread and roses bread and roses as we come marching marching we bring the greater days the rising of the women means the rising of the race no more the drudge and idler tend that toil where one reposes but a sharing of life's glories bread and roses bread and roses <laughs> I didn't think I could do that without crying. <laughs> Yay. So um, on to my presentation. And we have Lisa now too. Greetings, oh, Lisa. I'm sorry. Greetings, Lisa. Did you want to say any introduction? We've all introduced ourselves. No, Very I'm just briefly. shy. I just like to stay muted and listen. So thanks okay. for the singing. I was singing too. Excellent. Great. Welcome. Hi, everybody. 
Tonight, we're going to talk about the history of the Women's Peace Party and its daughter, the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. This presentation has slides from a 2015 deck created by Wilf US with edits and additions that I made in 2019, and even more edits and additions that I did in preparation for this. The Women's International League for Peace and Freedom has been working continuously since our founding in, 19, in, in 1915 or 1919, depending on how you reckon it, to link the issues of war, conflict, and violence to women's rights and economic injustice. They're all connected. First, we'll cover some early history within the Rogue to the Hague, then the women who made it happen and the consequences both personally and to peace efforts, and the early history will share faces and successes around the United States who have contributed to Will's work for peace. And we'll share about our four local Bay Area branches and invite you to join your work if you aren't already one of us. When the war began in 1914, people all over the world marched in protest. In August 29th, 1914 in New York City, women marched in a silent funeral women's peace parade organized by Fanny Garrison Villiard, Carrie Chapman Catt, Jane Adams, and others. About 1,500 white women marched, and behind them were 250 African-American women in solidarity, followed by, quote, a number of Indian and Chinese women, unquote, and carloads of elderly women and babies. Harriet Stanton Blotch, daughter of Elizabeth Cady Stanton, said of the parade, this is a movement for actual work. We intend to do something definite. We wish to have a meeting at the Hague Peace Conference called, and thus began the road to the Hague. Though they were not even allowed the right to vote, following the march, women planned to expand their anti-war advocacy with the creation of a permanent women's peace group, believing that women were more nurturing of human life than men. In January 1915, at a national conference of women's organizations called together by Jane Adams and Carrie Chapman Catt, the Women's Peace Party was founded. They held the belief that women, the mother half of humanity, could no longer tolerate the destruction engendered by war. As Catt said later at the Hog, we must teach our sons that it is greater to live nobly for one's country than to die for it, that love must supplant hate and trust replace suspicion. The official founding date of WILF is April 1915, based on the date of the meetings at the Hog, rather than the 1919 date when WILF was created. Or sometimes it's January 15th, that January of 1915, when the Women's Peace Party was founded. Uh, Jane Addams became internationally respected for her peace activism that ultimately won her the Nobel Prize in 1931, the first American woman to receive that honor. And yet FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover called her the most dangerous woman in America. Adams and other Hull House residents sponsored legislation to abolish child labor, establish juvenile courts, limit the hours of working women, recognize labor unions, make school attendance compulsory, and ensure safe working conditions in factories. Adams was a vice president of the National American Women's Suffrage Association and a founding member of Women's International League for Peace and Freedom and the National Association for the Advancement of Covered People. And she was Wolf's first president. So a US delegation attended the International Congress of Women at the Hague, Netherlands in April, 1915. The International Congress of Women had gathered together women from around the world to discuss and advance issues related to women's rights and their social, economic, and political empowerment. Prior to the outbreak of World War I in 1914, women's congresses were held in Paris, 1878, London, 1899, Berlin, 1904, Amsterdam, 1908, Toronto, 1909, and Stockholm, 1911. The 1915 Congress is often referred to as the Women's Peace Congress. The Hague meeting was the result of an invitation by a Dutch women's suffrage organization led by Alida Jacobs to women's rights activists all around the world, 
on the basis of a belief that a peaceful international assemblage of women could have its moral effect on the belligerent countries, as Jacobs put it in her opening address to the conference on April 28, 1915. Alita Jacobs wrote in Juice Suffragy in December 1914, in these dreadful times in which so much hate has been spread among different nations, the women have to show that we at least retain our solidarity and that we are able to maintain mutual friendship. 1,136 peace-seeking women from 12 countries gathered as voting members, although daily attendance of the Congress was often over 2,000. Each session was chaired by a different woman and many stirring speeches were given. The primary US sponsor for the International Congress of Women was the International Women's Suffrage Alliance headed by Carrie Chapman Catt, who later founded the League of Women Voters. Jane Addams represented the Women's Peace Party Executive Committee and was invited to preside over the Congress. The four day conference ended with the formation of International Women's Committee for Permanent Peace with Jane Addams as its president which then dispatched women envoys to heads of state in 14 countries, advocating a peace commission of neutral states. Most of the 49 or maybe 50 delegates from the US were Women's Peace Party members, but others represented groups such as the Immigrants Protective League, the Universal Peace Union, the National American Women's Suffrage Association, and the Women's Trade Union League. Of local interest, Rose Morgan, uh, sorry, Rose Morgan French of San Francisco, California, represented the National Federal Suffrage Association and the California Suffrage Association. Some of the U.S. delegates went as individuals. And here are pictures uh, from the Swarthmar archive of some of those women. The Congress elected an international team of five envoys who traveled back and forth across war-torn Europe and to the USA during the summer months of 1915, visiting 14 belligerent and neutral countries and meeting with 24 influ influential leaders, prime ministers, foreign ministers, presidents, the King of Norway, and the Pope. In October, a manifesto addressed to the governments of Europe and the President of the United States was published, explaining the mission of the envoys was to place before the belligerent and neutrals alike a proposal for a conference of neutral nations as an agency of continuous mediation for settlement of war. In October 1915, this manifesto, created by Alita Jacobs of the Netherlands, Crystal Macmillan of Great Britain, Rosika Schwimmer of Austria Hungary, Emily L. Balch of the United States and Jane Addams, United States, and issued by the International Congress of Mem Women, proposed a permanent peace settlement based on principles of justice, democracy, and international cooperation, offered guidelines for diplomatic, nego diplomatic negotiations among hostile nations, and endorsed political equality for women of all nations. The manifesto went on to influence the International Declaration of Human Rights, the League of Nations, later the UN, and the Kellogg Brand Peace Act. At the Zurich Peace Conference hosted by the International Committee for Women of Permanent Peace from 1719 May 1919, delegates vilified the Versailles Treaty for both its punitive measures and its lack of provisions to condemn violence. They also expressed disdain for the exclusion of women from civil and political participation. They approved the League of Nations with stipulations that be more diplomatic in principle and that Germany be included. The delegates also formed the new Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, whose constitution pledged to support movement to further peace, internationalism, and the freedom of women. The U.S. branch of WILF, which has its roots in the Women's Peace Party, is the longest lasting women's peace organization in the United States. Um, a centenary conference was held in Zurich in May of 2019 to reenact and celebrate the Zurich conference. At the time, speaking out against the war was considered radical and unpatriotic, and some members of the Women's Peace Party paid a high price for their sentiments. The economist and Quaker Emily Green Balch lost her professorship at Wellesley College, and Adams, as I said before, was declared the most dangerous woman in America. Eventually, though, the pacifist work of Adams and Balch was recognized, both won Nobel Peace Prizes 
1931 and 1946, respectively. Professor Balch received no congratulations from the US government, who had long regarded her as a dangerous radical. More recently, in 2017, the Peace Prize was awarded to the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, a coalition of which Wilf is a member. So that's a lot of history. Who is Wilf today? Wilf holds a triennial Congress in order to create policy, build relationships between Wilf offices and organize. These Congresses are an opportunity to build networks and communication between Wilf offices, elect leaders. The 2018 Triennial Congress was preceded by a public forum build feminist peace movement in Africa. This was the last pre-COVID Congress there was a virtual Congress in 2021, and uh, Wilf is currently looking for a site for the next Congress. We're not volunteering. So Wilf is a sisterhood of international peace women. We marched with Reverend Martin Luther King, and Coretta Scott King was a member of Wilf, as was activist Jane Fonda, actress Joanne Woodward, and an array of amazing women authors, including Alice Walker and Ursula K. Le Guin, and feminist teachers, researchers, and authors on sexism and the war system, Betty Reardon and Cynthia Enlow. Wilf has sections and branches around the world working on important issues such as advocate for disarmament, reduction of military spending and demilitarization, the end of male supremacy, radical change in the way we live, gender, and the fulfillment of women rights and human rights. Creating social systems that accord no privilege to people or peoples of a given physical type, culture, or religion, and helping create economic systems that will deliver well being to every human being and other life forms on this precious planet. Um, should have said that with this one. Oh, well. <laughs> so, this is the vision statement, and our website, uh, Wilf US. Dot org has many wonderful things on it. This is the manifesto that International Wilf out of Geneva. So this is at wilf.org, not wilfus.org. And hopefully Paula or someone will put the link in the chat for you if you want to see the manifesto. This was our centennial manifesto, and uh, it's an interesting read. So there have been a lot of dangerous women in Wilf helping to lead Wilf since Jane Addams. Many of them sacrificed greatly, gone to prison, shown up again and again, and their stories are important to tell. Here are just a few of them. Keep in mind that these are only glimpses into the lives and work of the women of Wilf US. Yvonne Logan of our St. Louis branch helped to initiate and complete a 1950s era baby tooth survey across the US. The study measured the amount of radiation from nuclear tests being conducted in the US and how much radiation human beings were absorbing by how much was stored in baby teeth. This story helped document the health threats of radioactive fallout and the impact of downwind pollution. Rose Deitzman of the Milwaukee branch was one of the first women engineers in the 1940s. Her work on the Manhattan Project convinced her of the dangers of nuclear weapons, and she has been a life member of Wilf US ever since. She also established the first STEM enrichment program in Milwaukee public schools, which challenged the system by offering the same advanced placement opportunities to students of every race, culture, and re in religion. Born near Hiroshima, Japan, Maria Koyoguku Hasegawa arrived in the U.S. as an infant when her father, a Buddhist priest, was sent to California. She graduated from UC Berkeley in 1938. She and her parents were forcibly removed from their home and sent to a Japanese internment camp in Utah. Deeply affected by her experiences in the camp and the United States use of atomic bombs to end World War II in Japan, Hasegawa joined the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. She joined the Philadelphia branch in 1945. She would hold varying roles in Wolf for the next 50 years, such as chair of the membership and extension committee from 1960 to 65, its consultant to committees from 1965 to 68, and was the national president from 1971 to 1975 during the Vietnam War. She served as president of Wilf's U.S. section as part of an international delegation of women who visited North Vietnam in 1973. 
1996, the Nwano Peace Foundation awarded Hasegawa its Peace Prize for her work in promoting peace and human rights worldwide. A documentary about her wife, Mari Hasegawa, Gentlewoman of a Dangerous Kind, premiered in 2012. This 30-minute documentary about her life uh, can be found on Vimeo, and hopefully that link will also be dropped in the chat. In the 1980s, Carol Burnett played Peg Mullen of Iowa in the movie made from her book, Unfriendly Fire, about her son's death in Vietnam. Her book and her activism confronting presidents and senators, Defense Department secretaries and journalists, helped raise awareness about the real reasons we were in Vietnam and the real count of US casualties. Her work helped end the Vietnam War. Former U.S. President Laura Roscoe of Massachusetts conceived um, and established the UN Practicum for Advocacy. It brings students from across the U.S. to attend the inspirational and engaging UN Commission on the Status of Women meetings and side panels and to meet with the Wilt International UN office staff. The practicum takes place in New York City along with our Local to Global program. Both usually take place in the fall and applications can be found on the Wilf US website. Robin Lloyd, granddaughter of Lola Maverick Lloyd, who went to The Hog in 1915, has introduced powerful videos about Wilf, including Peace Train to Beijing and Crossing Borders. DVDs of this film are still available from Robin. Robin helps lead our Burlington, Vermont branch and is co-chair of our Disarm Committee. I don't think she still is though. Peace Train to Beijing is on YouTube, posted by Wilf Norway and is well worth watching. Robin is a still alive and late and working. Oh yeah, but I didn't think she was still the chair of that committee. Anyway, Jean Hayes from the Fresno branch produced a video on fracking in California. It has been used across the US by other fracking and pipeline activists. This is a great resource to raise awareness of what fracking does to health and water around fracking well sites. And because it's clear every day that we cannot work in silos, Wolf supports a variety of women activists who are our allies. We donate, share petitions, issue joint national statements, attend conferences together, promote each other's projects and actions, and work to build a movement of movements because it's going to take all of us. Women like Charmaine Whiteface of South Dakota, a WILF member who leads the Defenders of the Black Hills. She educates and protests for cleanup of toxic uranium mines on sacred native lands. Wolf member Medea Benjamin helped found and is the face of Code Pink Women for Peace, which is an internationally active NGO that describes itself as a grassroots peace and social justice movement working to end US funded wars and occupations and to challenge militarism, support peace and human rights initiatives and redirect our tax dollars into healthcare, education, green jobs and other life affirming programs. Lucy Lewis from our Triangle Branch in North Carolina has organized rule responses to the horrific cuts in human services, budgets collaborates with the Moral Monday movement and risks arrests each week at the state capitol in North Carolina. Moral Mondays relaunched the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival across the country to challenge the evils of systemic racism, poverty, the war economy, ecological devastation, and the nation's distorted moral narrative. Wolf is a partner of the PPC, and as well, many branches have had PC support, PPC support events. And after Moral Mondays, <laughs> in um, many branches, including ours, support participated in the 2018 40 Days of Moral Action in state houses across the U.S. Our branch participated with a trip or two to Sacramento and uh, advertising each current week's theme at local libraries. Wolf had a presence at the Poor People's Moral Action Congress in Washington, D.C. in June 2019. I went and I met other Wilfers there. We participated in the San Francisco More Mobilizing, Organizing, Registering, and Educating Tour in December 2019, the last pre-COVID in-person More Tour stop. And enough Wilf women from our four local chapters signed up that we had our own pew at Grace Memorial, even if they did spell Wilf wrong. In 2022, Wolf stepped up and created Wolf for PPC Committee, headed by Emily Keel and Rowan Fairgrove, that did many things to drive turnout for the June March on Washington. 
our president, Darian Delu, spoke just last week at the California PPC International Women's Day event. So our partnership with the Poor People's Campaign continues. Our coalition partner, the International Campaign Against Nuclear Weapons, was awarded the 2017 Nobel Peace Prize. That same year, Wolf New York City had a Women Bam the Bomb March with supportive sister marches of branches around the country to raise awareness about nuclear weapons. The, the Nuclear Weapons Ban Committee at the United Nations that over 120 nations have signed. Wolf has had consultative status, category B, with the United Nations through the Economic and Social Council since 1948. After 100 years, Wolf continues to campaign for a total and universal disarmament. During its lifetime, Wolf has organized di dialogues between women in the Middle East, sent delegations of women to North and South Vietnam to oppose the Vietnam War, and worked closely with the UN to enact change for women's peace and security. Wolf supports United Nations treaties of weapons that ban uh, weapons of mass destruction on humanitarian grounds, such as the ones listed on this slide. TPNW, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, sparked many conversations, letter writing campaigns, and marches amongst our branches. And even the one year anniversary on January 22nd, 2022, Wolf branches around the country celebrate the first anniversary. This photo is from our neighbors on this peninsula, Palo Alto branch. And here are links to our local Bay Area branches, San Jose branch, Peninsula Palo Alto branch, Santa Cruz branch, and the East Bay and San Francisco branch. The next few slides will give some pictures and highlights from local branches. Please forgive me for leaving out Fresno and Monterey, but this talk is already getting long and I figure anyone sitting here in San Jose or SC in San Diego, which is even further away, um, doesn't really need to know about Monterey and Fresno. This is us, Wolf San Jose. We were founded in 1951. We are active in local and national politics and member of the San Jose branch champion world peace, disarmament, women's rights, economic and racial equality. Our monthly meeting is the third Friday. It used to be at the San Jose Peace and Justice Center and we've been on Zoom, of course, since COVID. Our raging grannies used to attend many local rallies and marches, including the Women's March. And grannies can also be seen at the Peace Corner and in front of the MLK a Library for Ongoing Peace Demonstrations. We hope to take back to the streets someday, hopefully before too long. I'm voting for May Day. The Wolf Peninsula Palo Alto branch was founded in 1922 by Josephine Duvenek and Alice Park. Duvenek and her husband provided shelter at their Hidden Villa Ranch for Japanese Americans during the internments in World War II. Park was a Palo Alto journalist and suffragist whose papers are housed at Stanford's Hoover Institute. The Palo Alto Peninsula branch hosts more than 100 members on its mailing list, but most recent meetings consist of a core group of about 20 women and men. The branch meets monthly to discuss ongoing goals, projects, and current issues such as shelter initiative for local homeless populations, the refugee crisis, and affordable housing, as well as ever-present problems of violence and war around the world. The Santa Cruz branch was founded in 1961 and has over 250 peace and freedom loving members, women and men. They are one of the largest, most active branches in U.S. Wolf. Members recently went to the Hull House celebration in Chicago to the 100 year reenactment of the Women's Congress at The Hague. They focus on educating themselves and others to change the root causes of war, violence and environmental degradation. Both branches were founded in San Francisco in 1923 and the East Bay in 1940. They share a website and Facebook page. I'm sorry, I couldn't find more information, but there are email addresses on their website if you're interested in that branch. In addition to meeting in our branches, there are regional cluster meetings held periodically. The Western Cluster has met in Sacramento for the past you know, pre-COVID two years, the 2018 meeting on September 29th, about 30 WILF members from around the state gathered to meet and share ideas. The meeting included a presentation by Ricky Gard Diamond, the author of Screwnomics, How Our Economy Works Against Women and Real Ways to Make Lasting Change. 
a related presentation on public banking, and reports back from the International Wolf Congress in Ghana by Darian Delu, now president of US Wolf, and Barbara Nielsen. That's a lot of information to take in quickly, and we'll be happy to answer questions if you have any, but we would also like to know a bit about you. We're stronger together, especially when we know who we are and what inspires us. So I'm gonna go around the screen, I'm gonna stop sharing mine, and ask you to say your name, where you're from, what brought you to this Wolf meeting, and what women activists inspire you. So, it, First on my screen is Paula Rochelle. So I'm Paula Rochelle. What brought me to this meeting is a, is a couple of things, a commitment to Wilf and a commitment to the Raging Grannies and a desire to learn because this is, some of this is kind of new to me. And so that's, and I'm part of the San Jose branch strong feisty woman well lots of them including my mother but somebody uh when i was getting ready to retire from working for 27 years at san jose public library somebody said i think you'd be interested in wilt she was not a member herself but she did inspire me and i went to the next holiday peace fair and found wilt and signed up and that was in 1999 or something. Anyway, um, we could talk about the Holiday Peace Fair sometime too, because Wilp was really strong getting that going and keeping it going. And I'm sorry, but I have to be more realistic than the numbers that, that Rowan was sharing in terms of the fact that I know that some of the branches would have a meeting about the size of ours or smaller. Thank you. So we have 90 people on our <laughs> mailing list. We can claim them, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's and you know, the, the time and place for individual people and, and situations, but it'll be good when we get to get back together in person too. Thanks. So, so uh, Janine is next you... on my screen. Great. Um, Oh, Name, where yeah. you're from, what brought you to the meeting, and what activists inspire you, which Joan didn't okay. Well, where I'm from is, where I'm living now anyway, is downtown San Jose. Oh, my name is Janine. I love that part out. Uh, what brought me to this Wilp meeting is knowing that Rowan was going to be giving a presentation on history, because I always love what she has to share. And I would have to say... Um, Dol Dolores Huerta is a big, uh, one of my heroes. Um, and I have Medea Benjamin, I think is awesome. Um, and I feel like I'm just starting to re-engage with Wilt since the uh, pandemic. So that's why I'm here today. Yay, welcome. <laughs> and Sarah all of you here, of course, are inspiring too. <laughs> Karen and Amy are next on my screen. Yes, Karen's asleep, but I, um, I, um, um, I'm from San Jose. Well, not originally from San Jose, but now I'm in San Jose, and um, I've been in Wilf since um, about 2002, I think. About I went to the first time I is a I went to the Christmas party actually, and then I went to things, and then I got and I got into the grannies too when they started. And um, I like, I want to find out more about wealth and I like history and, and I want to be part of, and I am part of wealth. I'm always, I'm, we try to be part of wealth most, like, most times. So um, that's why I'm here. And Amy does a lot of work for us, calling people to remind them of meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, you're next on my screen. I'm Julia from now Campbell, um, but I did live for a while in Sweden and Holland, went to The Hague. <laughs> um, I really liked it over there, but everything is changing so much. I don't know. Um, I don't know what, what brings me here to 
tonight is the grannies because uh, I do get angry. And so singing is a good way to channel that anger because in protest, I, I really can't stand it when people break windows or start cars on fire or cause damage. A protest should be, you know, I like the way of singing to protest. That's one of the best ways to do it. And who inspires me today? I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm getting old. I'm not really inspired anymore. Um, kind of going through a period of losing hope. Um, but I do, I listen to Tulsi Gabbard a lot because I do believe that if I'm attacked, I must fight back. And she fights back but she knows the system and she wants to change the system. And she knows the, all the money that's involved and the, the weapon sales and she wants to stop that. Um, so she, she inspires me. She doesn't want us to be in wars anymore. She knows what they do. Um, other than that, I don't know. It's, it's very confusing to me today because I know if, if someone attacks they want to conquer, and there's not much way that you can really talk to them or negotiate or come to a, a, a deal. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard. It's like cutting heads. What, what do you do? When we were kids, there used to be a, a group of bigger kids who would pull the fight apart and stop people from fighting. And it almost seems like... We need something like that today because people just won't stop. They won't stop. So, yeah, anybody else? Anybody inspired today? <laughs> uh, Penny, Portia is next on my screen. Um, I joined Wilf after I joined the Raging Grannies and Wilf sponsors the Raging Grannies, so I thought I would join and um, find out more about uh, the women's movement. And uh, I enjoyed the singing. And uh, I think I'm inspired by Jane Addams because she started Hull House. And uh, that would be a place that I would like to go there if it i think it's still uh open i'm not sure and uh learn what they're doing there very cool thank you thank you and i know lisa you want to be really private so if you don't want to share that's okay but i'm giving you the opportunity in case you've changed your mind I will just say I live in downtown San Jose. I have no idea when I joined WILP. I'm not an active participant, but I always enjoy the educational forums and sisterhood. And I've been inspired my whole life through ordinary working women and any women, who, woman or person in the world who's working on peace, social justice and economic issues so great and you guys are all inspirations for all the work that you do and i'm very grateful for the presentations and your activism since i no longer am particularly active well thank you um so i'm rowan and um i live in downtown san jose i came to this wolf meeting because i'm one of our end leaders and i we needed somebody to speak this month and I really love history. And um, so I got to do this nice deep dive into Wilf history and Wilf's presence. And um, boy, I'm actually, I met new people to be inspired by last week. The California Poor People's Campaign did um, an International Women's Day program with women from all over the country and uh, Representative Gwen Moore who I was sort of aware of because of her anti-poverty work. Since she was one of our speakers, I sort of, you know, looked her up. She has a thing in L about her, how her abortion experience allowed her to have the career she has and things like that. I mean, so 
I feel the same way. I mean, about my abortion experience that if I had had that child at that time, my life would not resemble my current life in any way. And so I'm, I'm now inspired by Gwen Moore, representative of Wisconsin's fourth district, I think. And of course we also had, um, Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris and, uh, somebody from code pink speak and, um, somebody from global women's strike and, uh, Barbara Lee from Oakland wasn't able to come because she had to vote, but she sent a video and it was very inspiring. And Dolores Huerta came and she was inspiring. And, you know, I mean, that's, and so I've, what I've done for the last week is I've been editing that video and I finished editing it today. So it will be on the California Poor People's Campaign YouTube channel, probably early next week. I don't actually know who's our YouTube person at the moment, but the video is done. And it even has a bonus. Um, uh, Margaret Prescott, who is the host of the KPFK show Sojourners, gave us uh, audio from the Pacifica archives. So we had a wonderful montage of women's voices from the Pacifica archive from history that just reminded me of all the things, you know, working on Shirley Chisholm's campaign and recognizing some of the voices. And, and then um, we ran out of time and didn't get to do the quote from uh, Coretta Scott King that we had intended to. But since I got to edit the video, I added it at the end. It's going to be a bonus when we put it in the newsletter. And bonus, we have the Coretta Scott King stuff from the from the Pacifica archives that you know we didn't have time to show in the actual show. So um, that's what I've been doing this week, and I'm I'm really inspired by the women um, around me. Uh, Nell Nell my hand. Uh, one of the quad chairs of the California Poor People's Campaign inspires me every time I chat with her. I mean, Nancy Berlin, another quad chair of the Poor People's Campaign from LA. She today at Alexandria House, which is transitional housing for unhoused women and families, are hosting the Apache Stronghold because their appeal is about to be heard at the Ninth Circuit, again, only the Pasadena office. You may remember that I went and worked with them when they were here at the San Francisco Ninth Circuit. It's being reheard in Pasadena, I think on the 21st. And so they're doing a bunch of actions in the LA area. And so today, Nancy was hosting Apache Stronghold. So yeah, I, I'm surrounded by wonderful, inspiring women for which I'm incredibly grateful. All right, there's just a few more slides. Oh yeah, if you want to join Wilf, I think everybody here is already in Wilf, so I'm not going to do that. Um, one of the things that I did want to say, actually, let me go back. Um, COVID brought our branch members low and recruiting at events has just not been possible. Wilf US has lots of recruiting suggestions, including something called a solidarity tea where you have an event in a public place uh, twice or three times a year and just invite anybody who wants to know more about Wilf and have tea and pastries and share current things. And that doesn't seem practical right now, but when we get ready to start getting more folks to join us, there are lots of resources on the website. Um, I just thought I'd mention that. And so when you join Wilf US, you're automatically part of the international thing there, you know, with all these branches all over the world. And it supports the United Nations program and the Peace Women. So, and this was a graphic that they made in 2015. System change will take all of us together. Women in peace, the love affair of the century. <laughs> it's just so hokey. I had to show it. And that is the end of my presentation. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> I don't have any questions. I just want to say you inspire me. This was really wonderful. Thank you. Whoa. How about questions? How so, do you do it all, Rowan? How do you do it? That's amazing. <laughs> uh, I, I said to somebody in a meeting yesterday, um, I'm I'm the liaison uh, will for PPC again because Emily Ke Emily Keel is having health issues <laughs> and so I took it on <laughs> and the person looked at me like wait don't you have health issues I'm like whatevs you know I spend all my time working for PPC I may as well be the liaison from Wilf. 
Yeah, thank you. So there I will be a Congress in, we talked about going to the, the 2019 Moral Congress in DC. It will be in June 20th and 21st this year in DC. The details are not started yet, but hey, um, <laughs> it, it is going to happen, I'm quite sure. And the International African American Museum in Charleston, South Carolina opens on June 27th. And so if I can manage to go to the Moral Congress, I'm then gonna go to the opening of the International African American Museum just because that's who I is. Any questions? <laughs> Sorry. I, I have a question that's similar to Joan's. Hers was, so how do you do it? So what's involved in finding all this history? You know, you're a historian. You know how to do this. But for those of us, what, what's involved in finding all this? Well, I actually did most of that for the 2019 time I, that I did this when we were still meeting in person. And I went to the Swarthmore Archive, which is where the national papers are held. And they have a lot of it digitized and online. I read the book that the women who went to the hog wrote, which was fascinating. It had chapters by the various women I've mentioned and others that I probably didn't about their trips to the crowned heads of Europe, trying to get the neutral nations to stop the combative nations so that World War I wouldn't have happened. I mean, and so the vision that they brought, that they were writing about, in this book, which is available on um, Gutenberg, Project Gutenberg. You know, I mean, it, it, it's just, it's out there in electronic form. I downloaded it, I read it, I was inspired. <laughs> and that gave me names to go look for. And then I would go look for the names and find their pictures. And and um, so, yeah, I started at the Swarthmore archives and sort of went from there. Um, all from your house yeah <laughs> so do you remember the name of the book that that the women wrote or uh, what i don't i don't but I, it's undoubtedly in my will folder um while somebody's singing when we make peace maybe i'll go find the name and put it in the chat <laughs> it was really interesting because their worldview and our worldview are so different. The things that they had experienced and the things that we have experienced after a century of war are just their idealism and their visions are really different than what we have today. And I was just charmed and inspired by them. Yeah, boy, uh, as, soon as, as soon as some, well, you said you might, get it into the chat but if you if by some chance you don't i'll need to send that out <laughs> well it, I'll, I'll definitely get it to you in time for the follow-up uh from this meeting you know with the link to the video and 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 oh, what. right so right. Um, yeah. i promise that by then i'll have figured out what it was because i read it a couple of years ago obviously when uh -huh. i did the presentation last time so of of the women you talked about uh, that you whose history is there one who really resonates or inspires you or that was surprising? Is there one that sticks out? I actually love the baby teeth thing so much. I mean, thinking of it, running that campaign, the adorable pin with the kid with the missing tooth, you know, I mean, what a job she must have done to get that data. And it made a difference in understanding public health and the nuclear um, dangers. And so I, I think that's my favorite. Although I have to say uh, Marie Hasaga also, I'm, I haven't yet watched the video of her. Um, it, it's only 20 minutes, but I have been editing video all week and I just found out about it last week. So I haven't watched it yet. But just reading about her and her life was was pretty inspiring uh, too. Yeah. Well, so. yeah. While while we're thinking about Marie, uh, the uh, one of the women who's very active now, the only one I know about from from uh, I can't remember whether she's from Nagasaki, but I think it's Hiroshima. Um, 
is active now and she participates in a lot of our wealth meetings online and so on. She lives in the, um, I think in the Portland area of, of uh, Oregon, since there are two Portlands that are well known. And she does a lot of, of things and has done some books for kids and that kind of thing too. So she's, when you, when you taught us about Maria, of course I thought about um, Hideko. Well, I, I'll put her in the next one if I get the information. You betcha. Yeah, you know, right, tell right. me who your your favorite women of Wilf are that are doing cool things and they'll be in the next edition. <laughs> but not for a few years yet. Right. Um, any other questions? Any, just, you know, either the process, the content, you know, what whatever... It came up for you tonight. Did everybody hear clearly that Rowan will make this available so that we can tell other people about it? As well as, as watch it again, because it went by so, so fast. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's people so always here. say I talk too fast and I pack too much in, but I'm so excited by the material. <laughs> right. Great. I just want you to know, you know, this wonderful yeah. history that we are all a part of, you know, our Jones taking those 40 days things around every local library so that everybody in San Jose who wanted to get involved in the poor people's campaign in 2018 could, you know, uh, going off to the moral Congress. There's all kinds of things that we all do. Got, um, Shirley's not here, but she goes and, 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 uh, protests at Lockheed most months with the, the group that po that uh, does the Lockheed um, protest. I mean, we're all doing stuff in our own ways. Amy and Karen send millions of texts for all kinds of things. And Paula writes postcards and uh, Penny works with the Red Cross and we're all just doing stuff, you know? And so that's inspiring. The inspiring women of Wilf. <laughs> And Lisa claims that she's not doing as, well, she's definitely not doing as much as she used to. She used to do an incredible amount of things with groups and internationally, et cetera. Yeah. Well, I think the message is that we can, we do things individually, but as a group, we make a difference. And that's the history of WILF is of the individuals, but who are part of, Wilf, this organization, and that to me is inspiring. You know, to me is inspiring. Any what? What about other comments? Anyone? Comments? Questions? <clears throat> well, if there are no further comments or questions, I just want to say. Let's a big thank you and appreciation to Rowan. Wow. You know how to do this on Wilf, whatever works. <laughs> right. Well, maybe it's time for the Raging Grannies again. Oh, let's see. I have so many windows open. It's going to be so interesting to try and come up with the screen. Oh, Rowan, I do understand how you have so many windows open. So we sing, we're going to sing two songs. Uh, we rage, we rage to end all war. And our usual raging grannies, when we make peace instead of war with one, two, three, four, five familiar verses. Who, who would step forward to sing the when we make peace instead of war. Anybody willing to step in and and sing that one? Okay, Rowan, you you got it. <laughs> so you know how this goes. So as soon as I share my screen, everybody mutes except Rowan. We're the raging grannies and we're here to take a stand against the senseless killing raging in Afghanistan. Iraq is still a quagmire and Syria isn't grand. We rage to end all war. 
no more military action we declare dissatisfaction with greedy politician who make war with nukes and guns we rage to end all war we put away our knitting tuck the grandkids into bed throw on our shawls and aprons put our hats upon our head we stand up for the casualties whose blood is being shed we rage to end all war no more militarization we are raging at our nation for spending all our taxes to destroy, exploit, and kill. We rage to end all war. We stand here in the street and wonder at the sad disgrace that civil liberties have disappeared without a trace. We're tired of old lies. We must put Congress in its place. We rage to end all war no more military action we declare dissatisfaction with granny clothes and voices strong we fight with all our might until we end all war when we make peace instead of war when we make peace instead of war how i want to be in that number when we make peace instead of war when women all cast off their chains when women all cast off their chains how i want to be in that number when women all cast off their chains when women's bodies are their own when women's bodies are their own how i want to be in that number when women's bodies are their own when everyone has equal rights when everyone has equal rights how i want to be in that number when everyone has equal rights when we make peace instead of war when we make peace instead of war how i want to be in that number when we make peace instead of war. <laughs> Goodbye. See you later. See have you. Have fun. Take care of yourselves. Take care. Be well. Glad folks have power. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thank you.